We didn't have a green room as much as the green room was just the room opposite whatever room we were shooting at the time. So if we were shooting in the kitchen, everyone else was in the living room. Uh, it was actually kind of funny watching watching these various uh, nerds of different disciplines kind of congregate and, and spend time. So like, uh, it, it was kind of funny. Like both of the couches in the living room were were commandeered. Uh, between shots, and everyone would kind of whip out their N- Nintendo DS, and they would start playing Pokemon Heart Gold, and and they would all be trading Pokemon on their Pokewalkers, and and having fights on there, and and exchanging little tips and tricks and stuff like that. And I actually did not have uh, Pokemon at the time. I was playing other stuff. I was actually still in the middle of Persona 4, but I mean not not handheld. I didn't bring a handheld. But uh, yeah, it was kind of funny. Like as soon as a sh- as soon as a shot would break up, like all the DSs would would come out and they'd start playing. They were such geeks. <laughs> Handsome Tom and Nikki were probably far more intelligent and efficient about what to do between shots than I should have been. Uh, I, I was actually really impressed when they started whipping out their computers and working on videos and and uh, cutting together promos for uh, well for their videos and uh, for the uh, the hero and villain shirts, which you can see them wearing in their in their videos. And they were actually very kind to uh, give me uh, one of each shirt. Which I thought was amazing. I mean, just giving that stuff away. I mean, I, I, I agreed to wear them in some of my videos. And and I think I do in the Highlander 2 video. You can see me wearing the hero shirt. But I've got both, and they're actually really cool. I like them a lot. And I really should have been working on videos. I had stuff to edit. Um, I, 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 I just didn't bring it with me. I brought my laptop mainly for internet use. I just I guess I didn't think that far ahead. Um, it was Actually, we weren't supposed to talk about the whole crossover thing, not to blow the whole surprise. And so we had all the... It, it, that's, I think that's why I kind of fell silent for like a month. Uh, I, I had actually done a bunch of videos in preparation ahead of time to cover my absence for the trip. Um, I think it was Privateer 2 and I think Wing Commander I had done ahead of time and kind of queued those up and had those had those on kind of a staggered release schedule. But still, um, when I was done with, with Kick-Assia... I had like four or five crossover videos with with like a lot of footage I still had to shoot and edit like uh, uh, Linkara's video I had to shoot a ton of uh, video for Pumpkinhead I had to shoot a ton of video like the uh, the, the gate cleaner uh, oh, I'm forgetting all these videos I was in um, I had to do a lot of voiceovers I had to do a lot of editing and uh, I actually thought I'd have to end up editing uh, Bloodwings and I didn't um, Jason was actually really good to, to edit that for me but yeah I had all this work to do and I was so far behind when I got back uh, it, it was kind of silly but you know I I, I just I, I had like two weeks of work to catch up on from Kick-Assia alone I had all these crossovers um, I, 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 as much as I like doing the crossovers I do wish I could find some other place to shoot them other than the hotel. Uh, the hotel is... They're not great places to shoot videos because the lighting in them is generally so poor. Uh, and besides that, you really don't want to be screaming and yelling at the top of your lungs like I normally do in my typical manic fashion uh, because you'll wake people up. And especially since um, I think we were warned that a lot of the old people that tend to gamble uh, were on the floor that we were on, so we couldn't go yelling and screaming because we'd wake the old people up who go to bed at like 6 p.m. I did a lot of crossovers, though. It actually, I didn't bring a single thing of my own to do crossovers in because uh, I, I, maybe I'm too nice a guy. But um, basically, every time somebody asks, Hey, you want to be in my movie? And I'm like, Yeah, all right, no problem, man. You know, so, I, so like, I, I, basically, by, I realized by the time I was starting to get shit ready, my, my shit together for Kick Assia, I was like, All right, what am I gonna do for my crossover? And I re- I, I kind of took inventory, and I'm like, I don't know, like five crossovers. What the hell? Um, and that was even before I agreed to appear in like vlogs, interviews, do promo spots, and stuff like that. Pardon me. Um, so before I knew it, I was like. I, 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 I was I was actively turning people down. I was like, I, you know, I was I was maybe too popular. Um, you know, if I do say so myself. But I was like, you know, I, I think Lee wanted me to be in something, and I was like, I I can't agree to anything because I'm in so many other crossovers already. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to make those crossovers. So like, if you see me around and I'm and I'm upright, and you you think I've got a minute, like call me over, I'll do it. And uh, maybe even that was was pushing it because um, I think if I ever got really frustrated to anybody, and this is not his fault, it was at Linkara actually. Um, it, I, 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 after the first day, uh, we were shooting his crossover, which you haven't seen yet. But um, after the first day, I was uh, just about dead. 
uh, I, I could barely walk. Um, and I, 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 I was tired, I was sunburned, I was... I was unhappy, uh, and I really just wanted to, to lay down. And oh, there I am as the minister of science. Yeah, the stomp rocket, great shot. I loved how it came down in shot. That was probably one in a million that the the rocket actually came down in shot. Anyway, um, I was before, but. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just hypnotized by this magnificent actor. Anyway, um, when we were done with shooting, Linkara, happy as can be. This guy has boundless energy. I tell you, uh, I'm getting into the car and he's like, "So we're gonna do the uh, we're gonna do the the crossover thing. We get back. You gotta dress as Doctor Insana, right?" And I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" And he's like, "No, no, no. We got a lot to shoot. We got all this stuff. You're you're like you're in about half of this review. We, yeah, let's do this thing." And I'm like, "Yep." Were you not there for when we fucking invaded Malasia for like eight hours? And he's like, well, why don't you take a nap in the car and when you get out, you'll be fine. And I'm like, die, Linkara, die. And so, like, I did indeed pass out in the car, but I, I, I got out and I was like, I was, I, I was trying to be civil, you know, and I was like, I'm in no condition to shoot your crossover. I will do it later. Please. I was like, we've got like three days to do this thing. Ideas Let me die tonight, at least, and, and I, w I will do this thing. And uh, he really wanted to get his stuff shot, you know. He uh, and, and, and with good reason, you know. He had a lot of stuff to shoot, you know. He had he, and if he couldn't get it shot during the crossover, he wasn't going to get it shot. So he wanted to get it done. I, I got that. I, I really didn't understand. But after the first day, I was just like this. I was. I had probably been more tired than I ever was in my life. I was like Murtaugh and Lethal Weapon. I was like, I am seriously too old for this shit. And so, uh, I might have been rude. I, I hope I wasn't. Um, and again, it wasn't Linkara's fault. I had agreed to be in this thing, and I kind of flaked out on him. And I was, but, but that day was the wrong day to mess with me. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to go to sleep now for eight hours. Actually, it was probably about. It was probably about. Five or six, because we had to get up at, at six, and so it was really late when we got back. I had I didn't even eat that night, and I was really hungry, but I was just so tired I couldn't even eat. Uh, so I got back, and I just I just passed out. Um, I'm out of shape. What can I say? So, Linkara was probably a little upset with me, and I was like, I I, I did not want this guy like telling me like dress as Doctor and say no, do it, do it, do it. And uh, just, yeah, I, and even when even when I did it, I, I kind of wished he had uh, he had organized it to where uh, all the stuff that where I was dressed as Dr. Insano that we did all at once so like we basically shot it in chronological order so we kept changing costumes like every shot and so sometimes it's dressed as Dr. Insano sometimes I'm not sometimes in, I'm in Linkara's coat sometimes I'm not sometimes I'm Linkara Insano in his coat and his hat but the, the the crazy goggles and so like I I must have done like 40 45 costume changes dressing completely in and out of that costume the entire time and I was like you could have made this more efficient Lewis <laughs> and he's like I know <laughs> oh. but we're good friends I, I, like it was just like on the day you know like just just on that day I was really really tired and so we're good friends. We talk online all the time, and so I don't want to. I don't. If you're listening, Lewis, I I don't hate you. I'm just like it was just that day. I was probably not in the best of moods for anybody. Like if somebody had been like, it was it was not your fault. So it was it was entirely my fault. So if if I was surly that day, that's why I was in a great deal of pain. <laughs> my feet were hurting, uh, and yeah, I probably had a migraine. The second day I had a migraine, and so uh, that was pretty doped up on uh, on Excedrin that day. And actually, I feel really bad that I was so surly to Lewis uh, because that's just part of the job, you know. Like when you do this hosting thing, when you're doing the comedy thing, yeah, you, you may not be in the mood to be in front of the camera all the time. But when the time comes and you you got to do this thing, you got to get in front of the camera and you got to be happy, you got to smile, or you got to you got to perform. You got to do it. I mean, you've got to muster up that energy. You got to nut up and do this thing, but. For me, that was probably the worst case scenario. Was was on that day? Was I was just I, I couldn't do it. Moving on, here's the big of course scene. Do you someday plan on being bigger than God? Of that you could say yes. <laughs> um, little known fact, actually, I'm in a D and D game with a lot of the people on uh, on the like Chris. He's uh, he's in my group. I'm in a with uh, Paw and Joe. 
Skitch, uh, Sean Faust, the uh, the epic fail guy. I'm probably forgetting somebody, but um, yeah, it, it, it's it's kind of cool. Uh, we, I, I, it's actually been a long time since I played D&D. We play on Skype. Uh, actually, I think they've started you streaming it. I, we actually had like 200 listeners in the D&D game, which which kind of is kind of intimidating when you're DMing. Like all of a sudden, you've got this huge audience. You know, it's kind of one thing where you're sitting around a table or you're on a Skype call with like five other people. All of a sudden, now like 212 people on this Ustream stream are listening to your bullshit story about dragons and pixies and shit. <laughs> Go away. I was actually really Don't flattered that uh, that Doug had written me into Don't such a prominent feature in the script, uh, especially as the Doctor and Satan, especially like having a whole day dedicated to the fight scene. Um, having a whole act devoted to, to Doctor and Sano, you know, getting his getting his fight on. Um, at the same time, it, it was basically every crossover I was in, except maybe the uh, the Pumpkinhead thing was like, oh, we want Doctor and Sano to appear in this one thing. So like, I had uh, Hotel Awesome, which was I, I actually volunteered for that one, doing the Doctor and Sano thing because I wanted to get revenge on Joe with the bag of poopy. But uh, yeah, everyone wanted Doctor and Sano, and um, if, if there was a reason, I was like, I think the Doctor's going on hiatus after this one. Is because I've done so much of the, I had done so much of the voice and so much of the cackling and, and stuff like that. And uh, Doctor Satan was one of those characters I very much feared oversaturation. Um, he's the kind of character who is best in very small doses, and I think <laughs> I, I got stories about Phalus. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. Um, but oh, there's Film Brain. He was actually kind of the. He was probably the real most surprising guy on the set. Actually, with he had such like this childlike enthusiasm. So he, he was a great actor. I was like, I was really impressed with how he took this character, who was this. He was like, his, basically a puppy, you know. And he, he 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 was always, he's he's always like head shaking. Like he always wants his approval, and he's always like he's willing to do anything for his for his master here. And it, just, it was brilliant. We do not do film reviews. We do not do film reviews. But yeah, Doctor Best in small doses, and I think I, I think this one fight scene was was actually kind of his glory moments. You know, the the one time you ever saw you ever got to see this guy actually throw down uh, in in any real fashion. Uh, but he can easily overstay his welcome, and I, I I think whenever I have him in a in a video in a in a prominent feature, I always get a few complaints, and I think they're valid complaints that you know you just you, you cannot throw that voice at people for that long. It's going to grate, and it grates on me. But uh, I, I think for purposes of this, he, he's actually a very inter in integral part of the plot where he's kind of like this, uh, the super weapon, the nuclear option, you know, to, to, to clear this guy out of, out of Kick-Assia. And, you know, even Nostalgia Critic wants him to initially help conquer Molossia because if there's one thing that Dr. Insano does well, it's, it's kind of wanton, senseless destruction. And so that's exactly what they needed. And, and so I thought, you know, actually in terms of like... Uh, Involving the yeah, character, it's probably the most earned involvement of the character because most of the time when I throw him in there, it's just like for a random joke, and so people are like, "That's such a random joke. Why would you throw this guy in there?" I think this is actually the most well developed and uh, and foreshadowed, and, and and it's the most well developed involvement of the character I've seen yet. So I thought it was really matchfully written, especially with the with the alternative take on the guy, where he's kind of this Jekyll and Hyde personality that I'm extraordinarily afraid of. And so I, I, it's actually kind of become a running joke now, where uh, like every time I involve Doctor Insano, I give a, an alternate potential origin story for him. So this is like yet another origin story that that I, I, it's actually really hilarious. Now um, there are several fans who have taken it upon themselves to develop. Uh, a backstory or a continuity that makes sense with all the various incarnations of myself with the clone and the Black Lantern and the the parallel dimensions or the Elseworlds version of myself, Dr. Insano, like the uh, the Party Mania version of Dr. Insano that, that emerges, who's one of the Slumper Brothers, uh, the, Link, the Link Sano incarnation. And they're actually, like, I, I keep getting emails of, like, essays, like like 20-page essays of, of how this continuity makes sense. It's great. I love my fans. <laughs> I don't know if I ever saw much point in trying to uh, keep Dr. Insano's origin or continuity straight. To me, he was always kind of like the Joker. Um, I remember, what is it, the Killing Joke? 
there's a few stories that actually purport themselves as origin stories of the Joker, but even in that, in, in, in the books specifically dedicated to giving the Joker an origin story, there's like three parallel versions, and I think the Joker's monologue is like, I always preferred my backstory to be multiple choice, or something like that. I just just roll with it. <laughs> you can't let this one uh, drive you crazy, otherwise you'll you'll end up putting the goggles on as well. Oh, and by the way, uh, getting into a fist fight wearing those goggles not easy. Anyway, um, we stayed in a hotel casino, which is actually probably the nicest hotel I've ever been to. Uh, it's probably by design. Um, you know, when you're when you're running a, 